I'm Christian Wimmer, and I will be discussing The Shipwreck by Claude Joseph Vernet, painted in 1759. The first point that is conveyed in the painting is the fact that nature will triumph over any man-made attempt to dominate over it. This is represented in three ways, the first of which are the waves, which constantly bombard the ships. The ships will be destroyed under pressure from nature, showing that the Enlightenment will be destroyed when it is met with pressure. Another way that this is conveyed is through the storm on the left-hand side of the painting. This storm seems to be never-ending, and it will destroy what is left of man-made attempts. And the last way that this is conveyed is through the light in the background. Now this represents two points. The first of which is that hope, that single goal that the Enlightenment's had. It's almost foolish because you know that they can't reach it. It's that goal to dominate over nature. And they will go at to any cost, which is why the ships seem to travel undeterred to their that location, though we know that there will be an accident on the way because nature will dominate over it. Another idea on a more positive note is rebirth. This rebirth is what follows death. It's not to say that all the humans will be destroyed or that society will will not exist, but that it will regenerate itself in a new and exciting way than it was before. Another ideal that is represented is the fact that the castle and the boat are two opposing forces. Now the castle, though it is somewhat odd to represent, is the romantic ideals. Now that is because the castle knows its place. It is strong and sturdy because it knows its place in nature at the top of the mountain. That is why it will not die and that is why it offers some hope to the last survivors. This is true that the romantic ideals and their beliefs in nature and emotion is so true that they will never die. Now the delicate boat represents the enlightenment. It is depicted as powerful, yet in reality it is flimsy and will be destroyed under any real pressure. That is like the ideals of enlightenment, which though they seem strong, in reality will falter when met with any pressure from outside forces, the greatest of which is nature. Now the most evident depiction of this great monstrosity must be in the people's reactions. Now the first point is that the people are very desperate. The survivors are definitely on their last, you know, hope. Uh, this is very similar to depictions of hell, uh, which I think is what Vernet was trying trying to get at. Now the helpless last survivals uh, convey many different emotions, the first of which is the lady on the left hand side. Now, she really conveys the, the feelings, those who are left, of how did I get here, you know, this is, she's very, oh, the overall tone of despair and pain is shown in her character. Yet the most striking yet subtle part of this painting is the man to the right of her at the bottom, who is sitting somewhat like the thinker. Now, he is filled with regret and guilt. Uh, you can. This is like the product of enlightenment. This is trying to get that Vernet was trying to say. If you go on this path, you're going to be wondering sometime in the future, why on earth did I do that? Why did we so blindly accept these beliefs of enlightenment while ignoring the blatant consequences that can result from our our great uh, ignorance? That is my interpretation of The Shipwreck by Claude Joseph Renee, which uses nature, human emotion, and the tower and the ships to get across Vernet's message in support of the Renaissance and in opposition of the Enlightenment.